Hi, I'm Dan York with uh, the Deploy360 program, and I'm here with Matt Larson, who is Chief Architect for Dyne. So Matt, you've been involved in DNS for a long time. Could you give a sense of kind of what, you, what your history is, your background with DNS? Well, I have been editing zone files since, I think, 1989. <laughs> I had a great job uh, in college at Northwestern, and uh, that led to being hired by HP. I worked on the HP internet out in their corporate headquarters in Palo Alto. Um, that's where I met Cricket Lou, who's become a good friend and business partner, because that was actually the next thing. Uh, Cricket and I left HP to start Acme Bite and Wire, which was a consulting and training company that specialized in DNS. That was uh, uh, 97, January 97. Uh, and then in uh, the summer of 2000, Acme Bite and Wire was acquired by Verisign, and I was there for 13 years, longer than I ever thought. And I then didn't, I didn't realize that was how you came into Yeah, that was, that was how. And then, um, as you say, the, the big recent news for me is that I recently moved to Dine and I'm now chief architect. And that's, that's really recent news, like as of July. That's great. Well, we'll let's talk a little bit more about that. But, sure. you know, DNS is, is become this massive system that we use for pretty much everything in some ways. You know, as we look at kind of how DNS has evolved, what do you see as some of the major challenges, I guess you'd say, or one major evolution for DNS in the next years ahead? Well, I think it's the continuation of DNSSEC. I mean, DNSSEC is without question the biggest thing we've done to DNS, and it's really now 30-year history. Um, so it's unfortunate that the Kaminsky vulnerability exists, uh, but I think it was a good thing in the summer of 2008 in that it spurred the DNSSEC deployment that we've since seen. The, uh, the route was signed in the summer of 2010, and following that, uh, .com and .net and other TLDs, and so there's been this tremendous amount of deployment, but mostly on the authoritative side. There's still a lot of work to be done on the recursive side, let's call it the client side, for DNSSEC validation, because it doesn't do any good to publish these signed zones if nobody's validating the data in them. Right, right. We just had a presentation um, that uh, Jeff Houston has been and George Michelson from AP Nick have been doing, talking about the the rise in validation they've seen coming a lot out of Google's public DNS and the work that they've done there. But I think we've seen in general this trend that we're seeing more validation. I guess maybe on that question, what do you think we can do to help spur increased validation? Well. Some good things have already happened. I mean, Comcast led the way and they showed that the world doesn't end. You can enable, you know, a, a, a residential ISP. I know they're more than that, but, you know, they enabled it for all the residential customers in the world didn't end. Uh, likewise, Google has, has done that, you know, great for them, for their leadership. Um, but it's still an issue for application developers. Uh, we're going to have to move, I think, from having validation in the recursive server can have to move that out to the to the clients. Clients have to be able to do something, uh, take action. They have to know whether validation succeeded or not. And so, to that end, uh, we, we need revised APIs. We need we need better tools for application developers. How do we get there? Well, the good news is there's there's activity on that front as well. Um, Google funded Paul Hoffman to create uh, a, a revised modern DNS API called Get DNS. Uh, and that was an interesting project in that uh, it was just the API. Well, I shouldn't say just because that in, in itself is a lot of work, <laughs> but it's not, not code behind it. So uh, he, he involved application developers, which was great because they're the people who would use the API. And so that, that's essentially finished. And now there's at least one implementation that, that I know of. It's, it's public knowledge that my former employer, VeriSign, is working to uh, make an implementation of that API. Yeah, and Paul had some, wasn't there some reference code associated with that too or something? There's a little bit there like in, uh, include files and yeah. some, some sample code, but it's, um, it, it, it's really just a, a mock-up. A mock mm -hmm. So beyond uh, getting the validation out to the applications, which I definitely agree with, what else do you think we need to look at in, in terms of DNSSEC? Well, that, that really is the, the, the big one because in order to do things like take advantage of, say, Dane, that's, that's the other big, yeah. uh, big DNSSEC uh, topic these, these days, to, to be able to secure uh, your websites with trust established via DNSSEC rather mm -hmm. than by a certificate authority. But that's going to require uh, that applications be able to consume DNSSEC validation status. So I, you know, I, I really think that we probably can't talk enough and spend enough time on client DNS set capabilities. Cool. So we're here at IETF in 87 in Berlin. What are you tracking in here? Largely DNS <laughs> stuff. That's, that's what I usually do uh, at, at, at the IETF. 
Um, I realize that's kind of a you know silly question on one level, no, no, but no. you know. Yeah, so th there's some there's some things going on. Um, there was the, the BOF today for DNS service discovery. I was in part of that. Um, DNS op the DNS operations group is meeting as they almost always do. Um, the Dane working group is meeting as well. So th so there are there are some significant activities here. Great. So we talked. To, you mentioned at the beginning that you just moved to a new role with uh, with Dine. What are you doing there? Well, so as chief architect, I'm going to be helping to make sure that all Dyn systems are uh, secure, and scalable, and resilient. Uh, kind of working very closely with the engineering organization uh, as well as the the product organization. So those those three groups will will work very closely together. It's a new role for Dyn. Dyn hasn't had a chief architect before, so there's a little bit of uh, figuring it out as as I go along. Uh, I'm going to get to build a small team, so that'll that'll be great. So the idea is to have some subject matter experts that really know about specific areas that, that can then help the more day-to-day -day activities like engineering. Great. Interesting. Well, thanks for your time. And uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the IETF here. All right. Thanks a lot.